sorry about that. I had my microphone off. Oops. <laughs> so um, this, I was just saying with my microphone off, that this is a picture my daughter took. Her and her partner went to Werribee Zoo and our zoo has a few hundred acres of um, pa paddocks and stuff so the animals all live together out in this paddock so that the uh, rhinos are able to mix with zebra and giraffe and they live in herd groups just like they would in the wild except without the dangers that come with being in the wild which is really good so I'm drawing this in for my penbuary piece the other ear you can just see around here so he's going to be all in pen and I can practice skin textures because these guys have amazing amazing skin so I'm just going to go up her back a little bit or well, him I'm not sure if it's a boy or a girl I think it's a, actually I think it's a girl one so I've just got a, her chin goes around there and then she's got I've got to grab my bit of her, my bit of plastic because I am going to end up smudging my ink if I don't get my bit of plastic so I'll pop that on there and she's sort of facing away a little bit so and start to pop her little eye in so I just got her basic outline in I'm not going to go to a hell of a lot of trouble like with the detail I'm just going to leave that for the pen work in the skin and it sort of looks down her elbow there so I'm just going to do this all in ballpoint pen today. Could move it more a bit into the light. There we go. That's a bit better. It's a bit better. It's bucketing down rain here, so I don't know whether you can hear it in the background, but we need the rain, that's for sure. So I'm just going to pop in can't really see her eye but I'm going to pop her pupil in with a bit of cross hatching like that and get the details in around her ears and start to work on home so I'm just going to shade this in with a bit of cross hatching. And just do that shadow area. And then go a little bit lighter up into her ear. And then start on the other ear, which is almost completely in shadow on the inside. So I'll cross hatch that. But I'll do that first, and then I'll just cross hatch that down and darken it up. Just like that. And she's got fur on the outside of her ear, so I'll rough up that texture there. So it looks like fur. And same for there and then do very light shading behind her ear right now I'm going to pop a bit of detail around her eye and 
and then run down her task with some cross hatching in the darkest areas. Take that right down there and a little bit down the middle. Just to get some of the shadow areas into her tusk. And then very light pen around following the direction of the horn. And I can go over the shadow areas again, but I'll just block them all in first. Get them all in first. So we go light on here. And then she's a bit darker in this part, so I'll do a bit more of a short to cross hatching down here because it's a bit darker and a little bit rougher. I think I need to turn another light on. I'll be back in a second. Hang on. It's a bit dark. That's a bit better. That's a bit better. A bit, bit more light on the subject. Sorry, guys. So I'll just take that down. Cross hatch onto her tusk. We've got a lightning storm overhead, so um, the lights are a little bit flickery, I'm afraid. So I'm just going to cross hatch where it's a bit rougher. And this is for my pen bureau challenge. So my friend Laurie at the Laurie Files and I wanted to draw every day for February, we wanted to keep ourselves inspired. So we thought up a challenge, which is pen bureau, which is to draw a pen or pencil piece every day for the month of February. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> and uh, I've managed to post to Instagram most days or every day. And I've done videos most days. But uh, later in the links below, I'll add everyone who's participated and popped art in. So we've had quite a few people join in, which has been good fun. So I've got to change the angle. The horn sort of ends there. So I'll just darken up darkest part of her tusk go on back down and just finish that tusk off a little bit so now I am popping in some of the wrinkles around her nose. So she's got like skin, they've got skin fingerprints almost, like fingerprint patterns around their muzzles, which is quite lovely, fun to draw. Not unlike an elephant actually, the way the texture goes. But I'm not going to do it everywhere. I'm just going to do it in bits, in partial areas. and take it around there, like that. And then down a bit, and I did circle motion there to get that sorted, like that. And then under her chin is all in shadow. So I will use cross hatching under there like that and 
and take that under her chin like that and then deepen up the shadows underneath and then we start to get some dimension to the shape of her face so she doesn't just look like an outline actually I've got to put a bit more shape on that and this is with pen you can change you can still chop and change things you don't have to be set in stone and have a panic attack if the shape's not quite right so I've altered that shape of her chin just like that and then I go back and do hatching over the top and no one would ever know that I'd made that mistake So I've just made that a little bit deeper underneath, which is what I wanted. And now I'm adding cross hatching for the shadow areas under her chin. Just like that. And then I take that up because the shadow goes up on that sort of angle. So I take the cross hatching up on that angle as well where she's got that shadow. And all cross hatching is is crisscrossing. And I'm simply doing this all with a ballpoint pen. Nice and easy. Just like that. Follow the shape of her face. And then these go on that sort of an angle. And they're sort of rolls almost. So I'm going to make them look semi, just a little bit rounded. Because they're little fatty rolls around her ears. So I do a little bit of cross hatching. Just like that. And following the direction of her skin and the way it goes. Just like that. And then she's got lines around her ears and I can shadow those in little by little just like that and just get a little bit darker in a few spots here we go starting to look like a rhino now I'm going to pop a few of her shadows in under her wrinkles on her chin. So I'm just going to do single line shadows for these. I'm not going into deep sort of double hatching. It's going to take simple single lines down. And the same for these ones here. That I've done just little tiny lines keep it simple and basic I'm not going to fill her whole skin texture in I'm just going to do some areas of it just to show some pen techniques And they cross over each other, so I'm crossing them over each other as well. Right, so that's looking good. And that's a bit lighter again under there. So because her nostrils sort of downturned, I've got to put a bit more shadow on the underneath side of it. And, yeah, this, like I said before, this is a reference photo that my daughter took when she went to our zoo that has rhinos free range, which is lovely. So I'm working from a 
blown up reference photo. So it's I've enlarged it so it's just her face. So I just wanted to work on her face. And a little bit of her shoulder, which I'm going to start on. And I'm only going to do the back side of that wrinkle. I'm not going to do the whole thing. And I'm just going to do it in large across hatching. Just like that. And then crisscross that down. Like that. And bring that all the way down. And it starts to give. And then I'll do smaller hatching on the underside because that's a big fold of skin. So I put a shadow on the underside of it just to darken and define it more, just to get the basics of that starting to come in. And the same, there's another one that's slightly longer, but I'll do the cross hatching here and take that down the length right down to her shoulder. And it sort of joins in at the very bottom to the other one. But I follow the shape of that down to her leg, pretty much. And I'm just working backwards and forwards to get that to happen where I want it. Get that happening and get it right into, it starts to widen out here. So I'll widen that right out and go the cross hatching in there. Just like that. And then I darken up the underneath of that. And I just work my way down cross hatching I might try and do it in one in one line all the way down and just do it as a scribble see if I can shadow that way and that seems to be working okay very good and then I'm going to start on this one which will give her the form of her leg so she's got like a roll of skin over the top of that leg so I shade that in, just like that, and take it up towards her leg. And I do the same. She's got a lot smaller creases, the same. So she's got lots of folds of skin. So I'm just literally cross-hatching them in to begin with just as a general shape and a general, to create the illusion. And then very soft lines down the back of the leg just to create a bit of skin. Keep it soft and light and close together and start to create shading. Just like that. It's a very light cross hatch there. And then I go back into her face and I'm gonna start, actually I've gotta do the top of her. So I'm gonna do some cross hatching, just some light hatching up on her neck. Because this is her skin and just very light in areas, just to suggest the pattern of her skin. And I'm not doing it absolutely everywhere. It's like drawing bricks. You don't want to draw every single brick. And their skin has so much pattern, you don't want to draw the entire pattern. If it was pencil, you just smudge it and have it looking like a a shadow area and just pop in the odd pattern just to give the effect. 
So I'm just leaving these as quite open textured skin pattern. And I'm going to do that between in a sort of semicircular shape. Oops. In between. Oops, my paper's stuck. My sticky tape didn't stick properly. There we go. And because that's a big fold of skin. So big open cross hatching to suggest the skin in that fold and just take that down intermittently and this is a sketch this is just how I would do sketches at the zoo to get likenesses and forms because I do do a lot of life drawing as well going down and sitting with the animals or around their enclosures the outside of their enclosures obviously <laughs> and um doing them freehand and drawing them as they're moving around me. And this is how you do a quick drawing. So this is not fine detail by any means. It's a sketch, but it's a great way to practice all your different techniques for drawing. And this is exactly how I would draw at the zoo. I would do sort of sketches, sketchy sketches, pretty much. So you get a likeness, but it's an impression. It's not photographic, but it gives you the shape, the form. You can see what it is. So I've got to add some skin. And you've got to, sometimes you've got to draw quick because animals move quick. So you've got to draw quick to try and capture the essence of the animal sort of. So now she's got a shadow under her eye. And I'm working from a photo, but I'm still trying to work reasonably quick just as a challenge because it's fun to practice and see how much of a likeness I can get. So I'm just going to do... Don't want just lines, so I'm going to do tiny little hatching for these wrinkles around her eyes. And like I said, I don't have to put every single detail in. I can do the shadows in certain areas that will create the effect that I want. It will give her the look that I want. Oops, excuse me, that's my dogs. Bear, bear, <laughs> he needs to go outside. He can let himself out, bear. Go on, out you go. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Live streaming. My dogs are under my art desk because that's where they spend a lot of their time. <laughs> They're always with me. So I'm popping now a little bit more shape to her face. We've had storms here all morning too, so the dogs are a little bit on edge because my youngest dog doesn't like storms at all. She tries to sit on my shoulders when it's stormy usually. So I'm just popping a few shadows in just to create some depth to her face or his face as the case may be. <laughs> starting to come together and as you can see there's not a whole lot of detail involved just suggesting skin and line and all that sort of stuff it's just suggesting it by doing cross hatching in the directions of the skin and yeah like I said before this is exactly what I would do if I was at the zoo and I wanted to do lots of quick sketches because animals move quick. Even though I'm working from a photograph, they do move quick. And you don't always have a lot of time to capture, capture an animal and how it looks. So I'm going to go with the skin direction. And that fold goes that way. And this fold goes this way. Like that. 
so they go slightly different directions. Like that. All right, so now I am going to fill in, because this is a big armoured bit, I'm going to put some cross hatching in the shape back there. In the shape that would go that way and then cross hatch like that and literally big cross hatching marks to create that effect okay and then I'm going to do a little bit more skin texture around here apologize for my dog again <laughs> Okay, so now I'm just going to build up a little bit of detail just in random spots where she's or he's got the most textured skin that I can see. And it's fun just to use a ballpoint pen and see what you can do. It's always fun to go back to basics and work on tone. So I'm going to darken up the darkest areas now, like that. Starting to build up. That's almost all in shadow. So do some bigger hatching there, like that. All right, and down the back of that leg, I'll just darken that up a little bit more like that, leaving the wrinkle. And then I start to strengthen these shadows because she is quite dark under her chin and all the way down to her mouth. Just like that, just that line. I don't want to do a straight line, though. I want it to be a little bit rough, a bit sketchy. And then she's very dark, just in here. And her nostril comes down there like that, or the underneath of her nose, the saggy bit. It's actually very smooth, so I'll just colour that in very lightly. And this is suggesting a rhinoceros just nicely without too much fuss and too much detail. Just shows you what you can do, just sketching. Not putting the pressure on of a finished art piece or a, a masterpiece, just a sketch. And it's just practising techniques. So I think she's starting to come along. Got to darken up some of the hatching around here. Radio. So now I've, I haven't done these, so I'm just going to do very fine hatching along these. Just like that. And I'll do a little bit of skin texture. Well, not skin texture, a little tiny bit of shading. Not a lot, as fine a lighter lines as I can do. Going down the top of her head in the direction of her head because it's sort of curved there a little bit like that and then it comes down and around her tusk like that that gives that tusk a little bit of definition. 
And as far as sketches go, guys, this is not far off done. Not far off done at all. Because it is just a free sort of a sketch. Just to show you what you can do with a pen and a bit of paper. I mean, I could fiddle for hours, but I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm going to keep it a quick one. Keep it a quick drawing. And you can just build up shadows with hatching. I'm not going to do a whole lot more. I'll add a little bit more skin texture down here in odd spots just to create a feeling of skin, the roughness of it. And take that around in quite open hatching like that just to give form to the shape of her face so following the direction that her face forms like that just remembering always the direction of her face Like that. Just fill in some of those spots and that's given the bottom of her chin form. So I'm quite happy with that. And pop in a little bit of shading here with very fine cross hatching. I've got to clean the end off my pen because I have a bit of an ink dot that I don't want there. like that and darken up some of those wrinkles and the very end of her nose is dark like that so I'm just doing scribbles like lots of tight little scribbles all together just to darken that right up and I need to do that just here and just there to get the darkest darks in the areas with the darkest values. And then right in the middle of that ear, I'll just scribble, literally scribble, scribble, scribble to create the darkest dark. Scribble over myself to like just over the cross hatching and over everything I've done just to create that darkest dark. And it's just literally little circle scribbles. And that's created that dark just nicely. And I'll do little circle scribbles around the middle of this task because she's got a big chunk of mud <laughs> stuck right on there. And she's got a little dark bit just there. Awesome, I'm quite happy with that. And I'm going to do those squiggles, just little circles, little tiny circle squiggles around the front of that leg. Like that, and that darkens that front bit right up. And I'm just having a sit back and a look. And I reckon I need to do a little bit more texture in here. There's just too much of a gap. And it's literally just crisscrosses in the direction of the fold of her skin. Just crisscrosses like that. And that fills that in. And so she's getting form and there's not a whole lot of detail in here. It is just lots of hatching. So it is really simple to sketch with a pen. Anyone can do it anywhere, anytime. That's why I'm loving Pembuary. So my friend Laurie and I are from the Laurie Files. I'll pop our links below. Um, you need to go check Laurie's work out as well. And on Instagram and Twitter and places like that, we've got our art posted. And if you want to participate, just hashtag Pembuary to Laurie and I. And, yeah, we'll check out your work and 
it's fun to share. And I love seeing what everyone does and what, what pieces they create. Righto, so pop more shadows down the back of that leg. And I reckon this is actually a simple sketch that is just about done. I don't know that I'm going to do a lot more. I think I've achieved what I wanted to with a rough pen sketch that you can do anywhere you go. So I kept it nice and simple and showed you what you can do. So you should go out and have a go, guys, just with any old bullet ballpoint pen. Just do quick little sketches and it all helps your drawing skills. So this took me 37 minutes to do this guy or girl or whatever it is, <laughs> this gorgeous rhinoceros. So, but it was quite simply done with just cross hatching and stuff, just basic detail. So I think I'll pop my signature on. And we're done. Okie dokie, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I shall see you for my next Penbuary piece. Have an awesome day, and I'll catch you next video. Okay. Bye.